Alright, so you guys have made it really clear that you do enjoy these strategy videos and that they're definitely helping you get better. So that's what I'm going to try to do for you, keep making some more of those. What I got for you here today is a 3 minute and 30 second de-atomizer strike playing Ground War Defender on the map Grounded, which is actually a pretty fast de-atomizer strike and I'm really proud of this gameplay, but it's not because I got the de-atomizer strike. It's because I made a lot of good gameplay decisions and a lot of good predictions based on player behavior. So I wanted to share this with you guys in a strategy video to help you see some of those decisions so you guys can start making them on your own as well. So something I do in this game that you guys should always do is run towards the middle of the map to start off the game, but don't go into it. Pick a position that has a lot of cover that overlooks this middle area of the map. That way you can get enemies that just rush straight into the middle of the map by putting yourself at minimal risk. So that's what I do here. I rush up this right side here. I mean, I just picked this spot based on prior map knowledge. You can see I have very good cover. My body is minimally exposed and I'm actually just not patient enough here. So I wait a few, like a split second maybe, and then I run out and someone actually happens to run by. So if I had just waited a little bit, maybe I would have gotten him. So here I actually get a bullet on him and I just keep rushing, which is a bad decision. I should have waited and stared at that cover on the left and expected him to pop back out. And I didn't do that this time. He ended up popping back out, quick scoping me, and I died. So that's a bad decision, something you can learn from that. Moving on, then I respawn and I go towards this building and I see the death icon of my teammate right in front of me. And I can also see based on the kill feed and maybe some sounds in game that he got killed by an SMG, specifically the ERAD. So I know that the enemy who killed him has to be pretty close to him. At because it wasn't a sniper, or LMG, AR, it wasn't a long range weapon, they're probably in that building or near that doorway. So I go up to that doorway and I already aim down sights as I start turning the corner because I'm pretty sure that that player is there. And sure enough, I get that player and there happens to be another one and I react quickly and get them both. Then one of them threw that gravity ball of death type thing and so the best way to avoid that is obviously just turn around, run in the other direction, try to boost, slide, anything to get away from it. So then I go back out of that building, go down those stairs, and I noticed that the teammate on the right of me got killed. And I assumed it was someone in front of me just because that's where the enemies were spawning, but after looking at my minimap quickly, we can see that there was actually a player behind me, so that's why I decided to turn around, and sure enough there are actually two players there. I get one of them and my teammate gets the other. So just a quick minimap check there made the difference. So then I keep looking through that doorway and the right side of that building on the rocks because that's where the enemy team is spawning and I pick up a few kills. And then right here, I get a few bullets on this guy, and he actually does some damage to me. So I fire off some shots in the direction that he ran off, but I make the decision to run away. And like I talked about in a previous video, I was kind of at a disadvantage here, and because I was on a streak, I didn't want to risk it, so I made the decision to run away. So I go back into this building again, I kill one kid, get hits on another kid, and he moves back towards that doorway on the right. I also noticed that he was using a sniper rifle, so I'm at an advantage in this situation. So that's why I make the decision to rush around the corner and aim down sights and fire pre-fire beforehand because I know that he's going to be there and I have a good chance of killing him. And I end up killing him and there's actually a few more players back there. I take some damage, I realize it's a bad situation, and I use my rewind to get out of there. And after using that rewind, I don't immediately run back into the building. I start paying attention to the other side of the rock. And that's because people always expect you to just come right back after using a rewind. So I thought those players might think that. And so if they were aiming down sights for me to come back, then I would have definitely died. So that didn't make a lot of sense. Now here, I get my advanced UAV, notice someone in front of me get a kill. And if we look at the minimap, I actually see someone running up that little cave to that little sniper like perch that people like to go in. And because I noticed that they're not in the perch already, they're just running up to it, I know that they're not going to be expecting someone to just rush right up to them in their face point blank. They're going to be looking downfield. So that's why I make the decision here to rush this guy point blank. And I catch him off guard and get an easy kill. Moving forward, I'm behind this rock and I actually see a sniper in that little window of that building I was in before. And I'm to the left of the rock and then I move to the right and I'm behind it now. And right here I could have made a decision to pop back out on the left to try to shoot him or go to the right to try to shoot him and I wasn't thinking so I just went straight to the right and you can see that sniper bullet he shot almost just took my head off so I got lucky there and it was probably a better idea for me to pop back to the left but I do manage to get a few shots on him and then I do go to the left next time to get some more bullets on him unfortunately I got the assist here at this point, I started noticing that I'm going on a streak and I might be able to get a nuke, so I start playing a little more defensively. That's why I stick behind this rock and try to get some long range kills in the next few kills. Then I move forward towards the stairs, see an enemy, and I actually run out of ammo while I was shooting him. And I realized here I could have used my rewind, but I was behind stairs and I did have a lot of cover, 
I also found that there was a weapon on the ground. And it's always good to just pick one of those up just whenever you might need one because I always just run with, you know, my primary, no secondary. So it's always useful to have one of those. So I just get down, stay behind the stairs. Don't try to do anything crazy. Just crawl over to the gun, pick it up. And luckily for me, I can see I got the assist on the screen, so based on my teammate's position and that I got an assist on the screen, I was pretty sure that he was dead, so that's why I got up and started moving again. And then right after that, I do something I've talked about before. I knew it was safe, so I used my rewind solely for the purpose of getting more ammo back in my NV4 so that I can keep going on my streak. Now, based on the minimap and a UAV sweep, I realized the spawns are flipped, so I move towards the other side of the map. I go up through that sniper perch, get an easy kill on this guy, and then I jump up on top of this box here, and I manage to get another kill. So this is an interesting strategy, because people always expect you, or they're always just generally looking on ground level, or eye level. So if there's players on the ground, you want to try to pick a position that's higher up, because that's just more likely to catch them off guard. So that's why I went up on top of that box, and I got that guy. He was even looking towards my direction, but he wasn't looking up, so he wasn't prepared for me. So that's an easy kill, and that's just a good tip in general. Just higher elevation, players are less likely to be looking up than they are looking at their own eye level. Skipping ahead a little bit, I see this guy, I get a few bullets on him, and he goes to the cover to the right of me. And I know I have no damage on me, and I caught him off guard, got two bullets on him. So this is a good position for me to challenge him and not play it safe. And that's what I do, I challenge him, happens to work out this time, and I get the kill. But again, even if it didn't, that's the right mentality there. He was at a severe disadvantage and shouldn't have been trying to win that gunfight against me. He should have been trying to run away. So I make the decision to challenge and I get the kill. Right here, I actually do something a little subtle. Once I run outside of this cave, I know that sniper was in that window before. So I don't want to immediately just expose myself and run straight out into the middle. So I take a slightly angled slide to get behind the rock in case that enemy was there so that I'm behind the cover rather than just running out straight and being exposed. So again, that's a really subtle thing, but that's just because I remembered that there was a sniper there before. So now the spawn's flipped again, I get a kill on this guy. He does some damage to me, and again, I use my rewind not to get out of a sticky situation, but just so I can go back a few steps and gain some extra health. There wasn't other enemies around, but just because they started spawning in that direction, I didn't want to take that risk, so I used the rewind just to gain some health back and get out of there. Then I go up through that sniper perch again, get another kill, and notice that there's a guy on the right there, and I'm having trouble hitting him, I just can't get my aim on him, and he does some damage to me, so again, I'm at another disadvantage. It's a really smart decision here to run away, especially considering I'm so close to my nuke right now, it makes more sense to preserve the streak than try to get cheeky or aggressive and get that extra kill. Based on the spawns and the minimap and where people are, that's why I make the decision to look at those two doorways before I even see an enemy, because I have a pretty good idea that they're going to be running out of those doorways. So again, that's just based on the spawns and something I already talked about before. Moving forward, I'm two kills away here and I look a little bit to the left past this cover and I just barely catch the glimpse of someone and I notice that they're standing there. There's actually two people if we look at the radar. So there's two people standing there and one was looking directly at me. So it's definitely not a good decision to go back there because he's probably prepared for me to come back around that corner. So again, I'm on the streak. It's not worth it. I just go in the other direction. But after I do run away, I do look back at the place where I just was, just in case an enemy does decide to rush me. So that's a good decision there. I only get an assist here, but that is just a good decision, something I wanted to point out. So again, I'm in this main sort of corridor here, and I'm looking towards that doorway I did a few minutes ago, because looking at the spawns, I know people are spawning back behind where I'm looking, and that is one of the main ways out of the spawn. So here, even when I don't have the best aim or accuracy, because I was well positioned and I was ready for it, I would manage to get a kill here. Now I'm one kill away from getting this nuke, and just like before, I saw someone was running up that little cave to that sniper perch thing, and as always, they're not expecting you to rush them point blank there. They're always trying to look downfield in those positions. So I rush him, I do get the kill, get the de-atomizer strike with two bullets left on my gun, just completely crazy. 3 minute 30 second de-atomizer strike. I go over here and I call it in, and as you can see, I was going nuts, and you can see here I'm just knifing everything, I was just super excited about it. So there is some more to this gameplay that I could go over, but again, this video has already gotten really long. It's just, there's so many little decisions in every little gameplay that you can sit down and analyze and work on so that you can start getting better and just improving your gameplays and decision making overall. So that's it for this video guys, I really do hope you enjoyed and learned something from these videos and can use them in your gameplay and hopefully become a better Call of Duty player. 
I really hope you enjoyed this 3 minute 30 second deatomizer strike. If you guys did any of those, you found this video helpful, or you just liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button for me, and if you're new around here, subscribe for more tips and tricks to help you guys get better at Call of Duty. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you.